Now, the Kangaroos jumped off the bottom of the ladder yesterday, so Richmond now on the bottom of the ladder. And they beat the Gold Coast Suns, who continue to disappoint away from home. And it would have been a travesty yesterday if the Suns had got up late, because I thought the Kangaroos were quite clearly the better side on the day. They were, and uh, it's fantastic for North Melbourne, because they've, they've put life into the season. And I think now we want uh, Richmond and, and the West Coast to respond like North have. It's been a brilliant month. Uh, and, and as I said, I reckon maybe six weeks ago, I said I like them better than... You know, St Kilda, Richmond, West Coast, because of the kids mm. that are there. There's a lot to like. Oh, it's so good because for, for so long I've probably sat here and volcanoed North Melbourne for a lack of effort and a lack of chase, any intensity, but you can just see it now means something to them and I think they're really hard to play against. They're getting after the opposition. They're angry. There's a bit more of a hard edge to them. Yeah. The press is in sync. There's a defensive method that now has opposition teams only averaging 82 points against rather than 106 or whatever it was in the first 12 weeks of the season. And the fans are starting to come along for the ride. And there's a rawness to it. They still made a lot of mistakes in that yeah. last quarter. In those last moments, they nearly coughed it up a couple of occasions. But the rawness that comes with Sheasel trying to intercept. And, and I love the way Luke Davies uniac tried to win the game. He missed the shot at goal, but that would have sealed it mm. a fair way out. I, I like the leadership he's shown. Lloydie, they need another mm. forward and obviously it hasn't been a destination club. It's been players who are probably at the end and trying to fill their boots with a nice new contract. But now, do players look at North Melbourne right now and go, if I'm a forward, I'm going to earn big dollars. Can they get a big one? Because they need help mm. for Larky. Otherwise, they'll probably win five, six, seven games well, again Well, it'd be year. a nice midfield, wouldn't it, to uh, be a part of with LDU, Sheasel and uh, Wardlaw, Wardlaw and McCurchill, McCurchill yeah, coming yeah. through. Yeah. It should be as good as any, so it'd be a nice place to go. But if they can win another two or three, Brownie, in the run home, it could tempt somebody to go there. Mm. All right. Kane found something he didn't like. <laughs> <laughs> Of course I did, Brownie. <laughs> <laughs> the volcano is for Damien Hardwick and the Gold Coast Suns. Here is Dimmer post-match. It's my job as a, as a coach to sit there and demand better. Because at the moment we're, you know, we're capable of beating the, the Premiership favourites last week and then this week we let ourselves down. I'm angry, to be fair. And as a footy club, we've got to grow the f*** up, to be perfectly honest. Excuse the language, but... You know, we've, we've been in this situation too many times, so it's up to me and the match committee to sit there and get our boys going. Well, I reckon Stuart you would be laughing. So quickly the language has turned from the bold pre-season declarations of 80% of our premiership list of, OK, we've made the coaching change, our expectation is finals. That is now the reality for Damien Hardwick. Now, the volcano lies in the fact of how hard it is as an interstate coach to actually jump on a plane and get your group to win games of football away from home. It's much easier to do it when you average 15 games at the MCG as Richmond coach. So they're zero and eight away from home. They can't even beat North Melbourne away from home. And it's just a, a reminder for everyone that has it pretty good in Victoria and for Richmond and Essendon and Collingwood when you play 15 a year at the MCG, it's pretty easy, particularly home finals as well. It's a little bit tougher when you've got to get your group on a plane. What did you make of that language though, Damon? Do you have an issue with it? I, I didn't like it, Kane. And, and again, people can say, you know, that's just natural with Damien Hardwick. And I, and I get what he was trying to do. He's trying to straighten this club up and he's trying to straighten them up quickly. But he regularly comes across as a sook in moments that go against him and that's not the first time he's reacted that way. And equally, clubs and Damien Hardwick and people at the AFL will ask for discipline under all circumstances. And I think a press conference or a media conference post-match, yes, it's volatile at times, but there's enough time that has elapsed since the siren and him's talking for that to be a controlled environment. So I'd be surprised if they walk past it. I feel I have to address it, whether they find him or at least just say this is not on. But they, to me, as an industry, they can't let that happen. Yeah, personally, I think it's, we've, all, we've all heard swear words. I don't have a huge issue with it. But if the AFL investigated Alistair Clarkson for an in-game swear word, that's, that's all it really was, which, which Clarkson did a couple of weeks ago, would there be anything to answer for, for Damien Hardwick there? Look, it is on the minor end of it. I, I get that. But, again, the undisciplined component to it... I mean, he's asking his players to be disciplined in heat of battle moments. He wasn't there. And, and again, I know it may have been done for effect, but there's others, times and place, Brownie. Are you volcano, vo volcanoing the coach or the club, the players? Well, I just think it's it's very easy to remember how comfortable it was for Damien Hardwick at Richmond when you average 15 games at the MCG and you have that advantage in the fixture. Oh. And so then it's Damien Hardwick then? Well, yeah. And, yeah. Then, well, and, then, and then you go to an interstate club and it's, it's tough to jump on a plane with a young group, but to be zero on eight away from home, 
What not, about the Swans who are on top? As you're an experienced group, though, it doesn't matter. It shouldn't matter. I know it's hard to... I think the West Coast Eagles or Frio, if they ever win a flag, it's an amazing effort because yeah. of the trip that they're making every second week. Mm. But if you're any good, you win anywhere, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah but they're not any good. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And ultimately, they're, they're yeah. one win better than they were at the same stage under when they Stuart Duke. Yeah. But your point's more around Melbourne versus interstate teams. My point is, if you're any good... We see a lot of interstate yeah, grand finals. I know, the grand finals. It is, but it's it's very uh, more comfortable when you're doing it at home every week. And sometimes you're even getting home finals that you don't deserve like that year. But you also get an amazing advantage at home. Yeah, you do. But I just think you'd rather only have to jump on a plane five or six times a year and play at the MCG yeah. 15 times. Right, the Kangaroos are really good against the Gold Coast Suns yesterday. They climbed off the bottom of the ladder. Nick Larkey kicked three. Anderson had 30. McKercher 37. And Sheasel 35. Yeah, they were up for the fight early, weren't they? And uh, look at the numbers there from some of their star players through the midfield. They absolutely smashed Gold Coast, who on paper probably have as strong probably a more experienced midfield, so they got it done there. A very well-balanced game. The Gold Coast Suns were coming home hard late, and you thought, I oh, know they're going to drop another close one after being in a winnable position, but in the end, they were too good, and they hung on. So here's some of the McKercher highlights. How about the confidence to do this? The running power and just the, the genuine speed that I probably hadn't seen from him yet at AFL level, but to take on your opponent there and to have that extra bounce there. Yeah, yeah, the courage to do that and then kick it inside forward 50. Now, maybe a bit of luck there. We could give him the benefit of the doubt, but like Sheasel, uh, the day that he's ready to go centre forward is going to be going to be frightening for I'm the opposition. I'm just surprised a few as well. He's I been competitive. There's a bit of um, yeah, nastiness about him, which North have probably been missing for a while. But, yeah, I love their intensity, their attack on on the man and the body and then and then their class with LDU, Sheasel and McKercher. I tell you, LDU, he's fast becoming my favourite player in the competition. I love how he goes about it. Yesterday he had 30 disposals, one goal, 12 contested, but it's the nine clearances and his form has reflected what North Melbourne are doing at the moment. You could argue he's been as good as anyone in the competition over the last five or six weeks and North Melbourne's form's turned around then. So. Did you coach him at Halebury, Lauder? Yes, yeah, unbelievable. You, you saw it. Uh, I've gone on the record. Look, way I, back I then. love this He's, play. Now yeah. he missed the goal, but he took the moment on. And had he kicked it, I think it would have allowed North to relax at that point. But sorry to cut you. Yeah, no, just, just the best, the best of junior football. Uh, I've ever seen, yeah. uh, and and he's got hangers in him. He's yeah. got the, that explosive we've seen. So I'd love to see him even go forward more. Uh, he's only kicked nine goals, I think, to most he's kicked. Apart from that. He's done everything. So I think he can go forward and kick his 20-25. And I think he's been judged pretty harshly early on in his career because he hasn't had that support around him. Yeah. You build a midfield around him and I think you'll see him become top three player in the comp. And then Wardlaw comes back in next week after that concussion. But Sheezer was enormous again. So turning into one of the, the clutch players in the game, he's, he's really clean. He doesn't waste a disposal. And to go from half back where it was you know mid 30s and a lot of those were sideways and lateral plays not to say that he wasn't effective but to do this has been a real tick 10 clearances he had yesterday clutch moments yeah. uh, like this he doesn't miss at critical times hasn't missed for the, the mm. season from set shots so yeah, I mean, North fans are uh, building the club around him, the, the next captain, you'd think, with Wardlaw. So he got nine, could have almost been a ten for him. All North Melbourne yesterday, I thought Common was enormous. What a find he's been out of this season for them. 17-4, intercept marks is, is a genuine um, key interceptor for a long time at that footy club.